Discover provides visibility into your events across all projects. You're no longer restricted to viewing them per issue. You can now query them by any metadata you'd like. This will help you see patterns and what parts of your apps need the most help, whether that's certain files of source code, controllers, routes, and endpoints, as well as who's impacted, whether it says users or even what types of devices, browsers, phones, and hosts and servers. So let's take a look at how to build one report from scratch where we look at errors by projects and issues within those projects and then events within that issue, because those are the three levels of analysis you could drill into with Discover. After that, we'll take a look at four pre-made reports that are the most useful, which any software teams could take advantage of. They query events across a multitude of metadata, not restricted by any particular issue or project. So let's build a new one. So when we build a new Discover query, we always start off with a raw event stream. This is not restricted by any particular project or event attribute. The total events on our table is shown here, and this is for the default time range, which is 24 hours as reflected in this graph here. If you update your time range here, it will update the event graph and this count and the events underneath here. And you still have your facet map, which shows the distribution of values for the tags on all of these events. So let's start by updating our columns here to show just projects and counts. So we want to show projects as our row items and account for those events. And let's say we want to know how many unique users as well as how many unique issues are comprised from these events. We set that. Here it is. So let's keep debugging. Let's figure out how many issues within one of these particular projects. So you could always select the project name in the top level filtered up here, but you can also set any value from anything in the table here by clicking add to filter in this button. So we say add to filter. Our one project is now front end react. So now the items in our table we want are no longer projects themselves, but we want to know the issues. So if we put say title of the issue here, and we still just want a count of how many times that happened. So here we are. So now maybe you want to know what were these 138 events that comprised this issue here. So there's two different buttons you can click in this row. If you click this count here, it's going to give you those 138 as an event stream here. So notice that added this attribute up here. So think of this as like the where clause. We selected these columns where this is the project and the title of those events is this. You can always go back. So clicking back will undo any little click you made. Um, to actually save the report, you would have to hit Save As, and you'll never mess up someone else's report. Uh, you would have to hit Update or Save As to save it. So another way to see these 138, uh, if you don't want to retain the table view and you want to see maybe the stack trace of some of those, then click View Details. And now we're on the Event Details page. So here you have all your usual information, stack trace, breadcrumbs, tags, and then you can flip through the events here. So this so far has been one issue within one project, but the true power in Discover is to analyze events across multiple projects and issues. So let's see some of those pre-made reports we were talking about. So this is errors per release over time. So you want to make sure that you're setting the release where you initialize your Sentry SDK. You want to put something like the version of your app so that then you can see your releases side by side and how many events you had, how many users were impacted, and so forth. Another useful report is unhandled errors in general. So here's the title of those issues and then the counts for each of those. Another one is URLs by the number of errors happening from that URL. So that's here. And another one is files causing the most events. So let's say we want to know uh, what were some of those events affecting our app.py? Then you could say stack.filename, app.py. And now we want to know what were those actual events. We know the file, so if we say we want the event message, and maybe we want to know, we'll just say the timestamp. And then here they are. Another neat thing you can do is you can actually click on values from the facet map here. So if something caught your eye that a certain browser was always causing these or a certain server name, then you can click on that value and it will add it to your where clause. So if we say this all started from a request from Chrome, then we click that. And now 
it sets that attribute here and it updated our events. So we now have a restricted view of events in our table. Another useful report type that you can do is one based on any custom tag that you've set in your application. So we saw in the demo earlier that we set one called customer type. So we set this when the React app was mounting and the user info was getting loaded in. So now I can see which of my customers are having the most errors. So in this case, it's the large plan customers. So from here, I can click on this count and this will set the table view so it's looking at only errors for the large plan. And then from here, I can select more information about them. So maybe what was the error message and the count to start us off.